seeing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So we have the ministry of reconciliation that all things are for God. Then we have the word of reconciliation. So he didn't leave any room for us to mess it up. So this is what the message consists of. Not imputing their trespasses against them. In other words, we're not trying to dangle a carrot before them. We're not trying to sound condescending to them. We're not trying to be full of conceit and arrogance. We're letting them know on Christ's stead, we beseech you to be reconciled to God. I think that's probably the nature. You yeah, know, that was verse 18. We beseech you in the, by the mercies of God to be reconciled to God as a true priest. So this is a priest role. Yeah, the ministry of reconciliation with priests stood in the Mosaic system was to reconcile the people. The prophets were sent to, to be able to speak to the people, to give give, give the people what, what what God had desired of them. You get what I'm saying? And the, and the proceeding word. It's a lot of things wrapped in there. But I, it's not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. It's not that they get a pass for doing anything. <laughs> It's not like we have a deaf ear to sin. It's not what it's saying. It's letting them know that you don't have to remain in that state of mind. That the Emancipation Proclamation has transpired at the cross. That you don't have to stay in that sin. So we can't necessarily have a fire and brimstone message and try to have a message of condemnation because we're dealing with a nature issue. Sin is a nature issue. So we're trying to get folks to stop doing something that's not of their nature. Like we were. Like the matter of some of us were. So, you know, some of us say, well, I, I, I you know, we, uh, we had an instance, uh, uh, some things was going on with a party, and they, you know, and they felt like they didn't want to bring us because of what was happening at the party. But, you know what, our mind is changing. You get what I'm saying? We're not looking to to become a monk. We, you know, it's a noble cause, but I believe we need to be a light in the dark place. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Some of us won't go to family reunions because we know all the rascals are going to be out of there. And we know there's going to be some shenanigans and some stuff, you know, that we can't stomach. And I can understand some of it. But if you dig deep within yourself, you find out most of it is self-righteousness. Yeah. You gotta dig right now. <laughs> Did you dig? <laughs> Don't dig right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> but we have been something has been committed to us that's precious, has been signed and delivered by Jesus Christ. His their very own resurrection has given us a ministry and a word of reconciliation. And this is what we have to carry. So we have to be long-suffering. People may not fit our paradigm. They may not look like us. They may come in with hooks in their noses. Paint all over their body. Huh? The big old hoops, I hate to see them, but they, you know, they got the big old hoops in the ears. I, I, it amazes me. I be in the mall sitting down looking like how did you get that in there? <laughs> That's like I had to stretch. I ain't know what you can stretch that way. <laughs> but it's a we gotta understand we gotta become countercultural. We have to you get what I'm saying? We somewhere along the line we think that the the culture that we are uh, been exposed to is greater than the culture that we've submitted to. If you submit to the culture of the kingdom. The culture you've been exposed to will not carry any weight. Won't be enticing. You ain't got to worry about your foot being slipping from underneath you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's why it's imperative for us to know what we know. Tell you that you got to know what you know. You know what you know. Verse twenty. Oh, I gave it away. Verse twenty. Twenty. Now when now then we are now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. Be reconciled to God. That's our message. God loves you. God's on your side. 
He finished the work for you. It's a great opportunity. You don't have to be enslaved to that passion. Amen. You can submit it to God. And God can change it. Yes, yes. Amen. Goodness of the Lord leads to what? Repentance. Don't blow it. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all woke now, so I, I can feel it. I, I, I'm serious. I can feel it now. Like, hey, you get, can you feel it? It's like, they lively now. Oh, like a 57 ship. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Y'all a little slow, but you work away. <laughs> Y'all a little slow. <laughs> oh Lord help me. But we got to be Christ representative. That's what it says in the message Bible. He, he wants us to begin to persuade men. Not just persuading because we got every T crossed and every dot. Uh, I dotted. It. It's because something has truly transpired on the inside of us and it's tangible. It's not just vocabulary. It's just not us trying to extort them to to join our church or become a part of our denomination or you get what I'm saying to get them to be indoctrinated it's not even about necessarily you need doctrine because that's the system that keeps us to be able to interpret things and discern things but it's not all about that they'll know us by our love they can give a crap about your theology is it true Opportunity, you see darkness, you can get over there and say, you know what, is there anything on your heart? I see you crying, let me just pray for you. Yeah. Not all dignified, though. Yeah. Yeah. Be touched with the feeling of infirmity. Right. Yeah. I see you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need me to intercede for thee? <laughs> oh, Lord. Step away from the car. <laughs> That's why our testimony will reveal to people where we are. Yeah. And our lifestyle will reveal to people who we are. Yes. Oh, y'all better write that down. Yes. Our testimony reveals to people where we are. It's on your journey. It's that like you're going from one level of understanding to the next. But then our lifestyle reveals to people who we truly are, our identity, and the work of the cross, and how it's become efficacious. And it has done its work on the inside of you because you've yielded to it. So once again, our testimony reveals to people where we are. Our lifestyle reveals to people who we are. So the where and the who is important. Don't get stuck. Some folks try to lead people to the church, and that's it. Oh. Y'all know I'm talking to. Like, like I tell you, look at that. Y'all, you know. Our conscience get uh, sedated when we can bring somebody. Come on, man. Come on, come on. When we get excited about bringing them to the house of God, some great victory. Yeah. But the testimony will tell people where we are. They can tell that the victory that you claim that you have in your life is authentic. And your lifestyle tells them who you are. You can't say you believe in God and then you're doing something contrary. Those are the two things that's, I'm telling you, we can do tracks, we can go door to door, we can be excited about God, we can have revivals and conferences. Until that happens, your testimony and your lifestyle become a match. Nothing will happen because to have a testimony, you've got to have an encounter. you got to have a recorded act of God's divine grace. It's, it's, a, it's a, what do they call it, a memorabilia of where God did something in your life, a memorial. Memorabilia is better. Memorial sounds like something dead. Memorabilia. You can say, man, God did this for bam, 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 bam. But the thing about it, most of our, our testimony is, I joined the church. We have no testimony after saying, I belong to so-and-so's church. Oh, y'all looking at me funny, but y'all know I'm telling the truth. Most of us, the only witness we have, the only testimony we have is that we found a local church to, to connect with. We, have, we don't have any encounters that can say, hey, that can speak on your behalf. And even when they want to bring accusation against you, your testimony and your lifestyle has a way to shut them down. So that you ain't trying to impose their iniquities on them. You're giving them an opportunity. You're giving them a lifeline. You're giving them a measure of hope. You're doing justice. That's what justice does. Justice gives hope. 
Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. sure. Something was committed to our stewardship. And it's very imperative for us to grow in our understanding. To actually not only to belong to the family, but be about the family's business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just to say I belong to a denomination or I belong to a church or, or I've been at real board in the national ministry for X amount of years, it's not, it's not sufficient. Should never be sufficient. That's a false balance. You should be able to say, man, I'm looking into my life and I can see bits and pieces of Christ's nature being formed in me. That my testimony of where I am and the lifestyle of who I am are congruent. They're not at odds. It's been reconciled in my heart. That is when the ministry and the word of reconciliation will come to the surface. When men can see our works and glorify our Father in heaven. All right. Praise the Lord. Go back to Isaiah 32. Um, did anybody get anything out of that portion? Yeah. Okay. Isaiah 32 verse. Uh, we'll start at one. We'll work our way down and we'll go to the next point. Isaiah. Behold, the king shall reign in righteousness. Prince of Surely Judgment next. And a man should be as the high place for the wind. I had some notes on that and I lost all them notes. I was so mad downstairs when I was walking through it. Like, really? Well, I'm going to see if it's stored in my heart. A man should be as a hiding place from the wind. We're going to talk about it. And a covert from the tempest. You need to underline it. Underline it. If you don't underline it, I'm going to sit in your lap. Underline it. Look down at the book. Underline it. Y'all looking at me. Underline it. A man should be a hiding place from the wind. And a what? Covert from the tempest. So there's a wind and a tempest. Anybody have anything other than tempest? Any other version? Everybody got tempest? Huh? Shelter from the storm. Is that a high place from the wind or shelter from the storm? That's what the tempest is? A place from the wind. Okay. 